Live from Joe's mom's basement, it's The Stacking Benjamin Show. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and today we're diving into one popular list of 24 thoughts for 2024. Hold on, there's no way I'm going to be able to come up with 24 thoughts this whole year. Anyway, we're going to get help from this podcast's own Danica Patrick. It's Paula Pant. And the man who drives us all to work, OG. And finally, this year's winner of Formula One, Max Verstappen? Whoa, nah, forget it. It's just Len Penzo. But that's not all. Halfway through the show, I'll share my super fast 2024 trivia contest kickoff question. And now, a guy who raced here to bring you the best personal finance advice around, it's Joe Saul Cihai. Hey, stackers, as we race into 2024, what a great episode we have for you today. I was thinking the same thing. Somebody needs a voiceover of... Uh... <laughs> that's pretty good that's really good wow no extra cost for that folks no extra cost <laughs> we bring the sound effects in it uh, we should have said live from the floor of her parents spare bedroom it's paula pant <laughs> well hello hello <laughs> describe where you're at right now so I am sitting for, uh, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, I am sitting on the floor of the guest room of my parents' home. I came here to visit them for the holidays and I made it an extended trip. So, you know, it's, it's at the time we're recording, it's early January and uh, I'm actually flying back home tomorrow. But in the meantime, I'm recording this episode from here. But the problem is uh, my laptop doesn't have any battery in it anymore. The only way that I could plug it in while recording is by sitting next to the wall plug, which requires sitting on the floor. So I got my yoga mat right here. <laughs> and uh, and this is this is going to be a floor-tastic right. event. The, the great thing is, Paul, I can already tell that room is twice as big as your apartment in New York. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> it really is. It's amazing how much space there is. <laughs> She and just lays not, on the like floor. This is like an average size house. <laughs> yeah, making you making can't dust reach back angels. And touch the opposite wall. <laughs> yeah, it's fantastic. And the man who has a bunker larger than Paula's uh, apartment back in New York City, <laughs> it's Mr. Len Penzo. Happy New Year, Mr. Penzo. Happy New Year. I want to, you know, I, I want to tell you that uh, at the beginning of the year here, I, I made a resolution to lose uh, fifteen pounds. We're 12 well, days so, in. Yeah. So so I guess that means I have 20 pounds to go. <laughs> that was a math. I know that was a math <laughs> thing. But, first, you know, you can keep you know. up, people. Keep Play up. it back, folks. Play <laughs> it back and you'll see. Yeah, knowing that's a, a math question. <laughs> <laughs> see? Wait a minute. Okay, stackers. If, if Len can make the math joke just offhand... You should be able to send it. We, we got like what, Doug? Three more spaces left in our math joke off. You got to, you got to send We're those joke in. each other off. <laughs> Joe, Joe at stackybenjamins.com. So fun. The joke off. But see, Len just casually throws them about. And a guy throwing <laughs> about lessons about money in 2024 like it's candy. It's Mr. OG. Throwing it like it's cotton candy. Oh, but th that would that wouldn't go very far. It wouldn't you wouldn't be able to toss no. it. But it'd be delicious. Cotton candy. Delightful. Indeed. Do you guys remember these? Yes. Oh, Necco wafers. Yes. Yeah. Where'd you find those? Uh, a buddy in of a mine gave, from gave me a pack. <laughs> he gifted it. <laughs> they taste yeah. like it. He found them in a box. Said As Halloween, 87. I got them at the sock hop. <laughs> Necco wafers. The Do you know what Necco stands for? It stands for something? Yeah, I know it. I just learned this a couple of years ago. I was just thought that's the company name. It, no, it's the New England Candy Company. Oh, yeah. wow. I drove by their like factory area. I was in a pretty seedy part of town outside of Boston. <laughs> okay, guys, I, I think this show's over. I think we're done. <laughs> and scene. <laughs>
everything they need to know right there. You know what, Doug? Tell us, uh, 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 tell us some more facts about the New England Candy Company. <laughs> that you don't care about. <laughs> that, that, that I'm going to totally put ads in the way of. <laughs> no, seriously, tell us more, Doug. Yeah, so anyways, if you can fit all 70... 70- Turns out he meant mouth. (laughs) (laughs) That's how you get the... I was way off. My bad. That one was on me. I was just going for the lifetime supply. Oh, my goodness. We're starting off 2024, stackers. Maybe the weirdest Friday open ever. We got Paul Alano G. Doug. Let's dive into this uh, really fantastic piece. Today's topic uh, was inspired by uh, Jonathan Clements, who's been on the show. He's the former uh, personal finance columnist of the Wall Street Journal and also uh, is the man behind the humble dollar. Uh, Jonathan has his 24 rules for 2024. And like everything else, Mr. Clements touches, there is just some gold in these hills. Now, we won't have time for all 24. So if you want to dig into Jonathan's list, head to Stacking Benjamins and hit the show notes and you'll see all of them. But I thought we would uh, just we take some of these rules for 2024 and uh, ask all of you what your favorite ones are. And maybe we discuss some of these excellent, excellent rules. Paula, you've got one that you called yours like even before we started recording what is it oh yes okay so rule number five doubt yourself boy going to 2024 (laughs) just thinking just full of self-doubt yes exactly (laughs) the point that he makes here is not that you should have self-doubt about your you know intrinsic worth or anything like that but rather that you should doubt the ideas that pop into your head that particularly when they divert from the plan that you have already laid out for yourself, your investment plan, because it's really tempting to give in to shiny object syndrome, right? Maybe in the past, in moments of clarity, you've sat down and said to yourself, hey, I'm going to dollar cost average into passively managed index funds. But then one morning due to being on social media too long and listening to too many of your coworkers talk at the proverbial water cooler, you're like, you know, or I could put it all on Bitcoin. Right. right? And, uh, and when those moments happen, when the shiny object syndrome happens, it's critical to doubt yourself, to doubt the fleeting impulses that pop into your head and you know, run your plan by trusted advisors who can, who can be like, yo, hey, hey, remember the, the 10-year plan? Stick to the 10-year plan. Or, Paula, let's take half the money, put it in XM radio, take the other half, put it in Sirius satellite radio, watch them both go up, get in a bunch of debt, and then merge, and you got all the crap in one company like I did. I was going to say, that sounds suspiciously specific. Incredibly specific. <laughs> Why I go individual stocks in the first place is beyond me. Why I decided I need two satellite companies is beyond me. Why, when they got a new bunch of debt, I didn't go out, and it was all just exactly what you're talking about here. Len, I'm... I, I got to believe when your portfolio has gone the wrong way, it wasn't because of laid out beautiful planning. It was some of the stuff Paul is talking about. You know what I got to have in my portfolio? <laughs> well, uh, um, yeah, I, you know, most of my things that have gone bad, I knew getting into them that they would be risky. So, um, and you know me, I've, I've told, I've told the listeners here many times, my biggest fault was always being too risk averse. So, um, I guess the good news is that helped me from avoid losing a lot of stocks. I do remember, uh, I think I've talked about this one before the Boston chicken, uh, remember Boston, Boston market, yes. Boston chicken. Oh. That, that was one of the ones where I thought for sure was a, I went there and I thought the food was delicious. And I was like, this is going to be a hit. hit. And they went bankrupt. And I lost, I lost everything on that one. But generally I tried to stay risk averse. So, and that, and that had its, it's a double-edged sword, of course. It it limited my, um, my returns when I was younger, but uh, it also limited my losses too. So. 
Turns out making a great dinner doesn't equal profits, Len. No, no. You know what? That is a shock. I, I'm still shocked because who is, is it Warren Buffett or, or I don't know who said, you know, invest in things that you know, you know about that. Peter you know, Lynch. That oh, was it Peter Lynch that, you know, and and you're usually well off. Well, I you know I swore by that Boston chicken or Boston market. I think they changed the name and, and it, it backfired. Yeah. That totally backfired on me. So that's not always true, folks. It is interesting as, as you dive deeper into his book, Len, that he says that to start there and then he says beyond that, that's that's like the top of your funnel. And then you begin the funnel process under that. Do it. You know, they have profits, they have debt, yeah. they have whatever. But, you know, probably better for most of us to do what you're saying, get, get diversified yeah. gee, collection of collection of funds instead. Uh, oh, gee, let's talk about a stock that one of us messed up. Let's talk about Riven. Like there's one. Rivian. <laughs> <laughs> really familiar with that one, huh? <laughs> I've been I've been pronouncing everybody's name wrong, every actor's name wrong, every company's name wrong. I don't know if early well, Joel, onset dementia. Uh, right. <laughs> I think it's true for any any individual position. I was I was talking to um, somebody the other day who has it gets a lot of company stock as part of their benefits as part of their bonus, you know, restricted shares. And I said, it seems really easy to manage when you have a year or two's worth of bonuses in company stock. But if you don't have a plan for diversifying that, you're going to wake up one day and have, you know, four or five or $6 million of company stock. And the guy was like, sounds like a hell of a day. I said, well, no, that's the problem. You'll have 90% of your money will be in one company, which sounds great until it stops sounding great. So, uh, you know, thinking about it from the from the diversification perspective, um, you know, I would also I would also advocate for making sure that you've got a sell strategy for those positions that are um, just given to you, you know, or or you've got, you know, like Paula said, you've got the twinkle in your eye and you want to put it all in Bitcoin or something like that. It's like you can have those things, but but it's got to be a part of the overall plan, you know certain percentages and and have have rules around what those what those percentages should look like what i like about this piece is that at at the end of this he says my advice discuss your big investment bet with a friend or family member in all likelihood as you try to articulate your rationale you realize it isn't so irrational <laughs> that it's not really not that rational what what strikes me about that though paula is that you're when you talk to a friend or a family member about this, you're not trying to convince them or get their okay. You're just trying to say it out loud so you can hear how freaking goofy this really is. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, the danger with the advice of talking to a friend or a family member is that that person might give you that person might not know what they're talking about. In fact, chances are they probably don't. Right. And so they may give you uh, poor advice. They may give they may reflect poor uh, judgment back at you. So I agree that you want to be able to see if you can even articulate your argument for it. But the risk there is that some people are really good. You know, think about high school, the best people on the debate team, they, they can articulate an amazing argument about absolutely anything. Some people oh, just so have a, a knack. Talking yeah, myself exactly. into the stupidest shit. Exactly. You said earlier this week, like chat GPT, it will confidently give you the wrong answer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Precisely. Precisely. So if, if you know that you are really good at eloquently speaking garbage, and if you know that your family and friends are likely to not have the best of feedback about finances, because most people don't, because most people don't understand it, I would say go to a financial advisor and run it by that person and see what they say. Oh, even with a family or friend, though. He doesn't mm -hmm. say to get their advice. He says you're right. articulating it for yourself. Right. You're saying right. it out loud. How many of you run, you know, let's not talk about your main portfolio. Let's talk about the sandbox things. I think, Paula, you've talked about mm -hmm. your oil company before. <laughs> uh, 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 Len, your beautiful home by the railroad tracks. Uh, 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 Doug's Rivian investment. Uh, OG's uh, every third day lottery pick. Um, what's. Do you guys ever run those by other people? Just articulate them. Have you done that? Because I have to admit, I haven't. But it's great advice. I ran Rivian by OG. <laughs> <laughs> and what did I say? 
for the record. Buy as much as you can afford. Yeah, what did he say later, Doug? Uh, sell, sell, sell. Yes, he did. I did not. I ran my uh, my house pick by the realtor that showed me the home, and he assured me that it was oh. a great a great oh. home. So, great buy. Whoa, yes, he worse. assured me. <laughs> ran it by the sales guy who was selling you the home. Yes, right. <laughs> Well, let's stick with you, Mr. Penzo. What's uh, what's maybe your favorite on this list? Um, well, there's a lot. I don't know if it's my favorite, but it was a one I liked. I like control what you can um, and don't worry so much about the things that you can't control. And one thing that kind of stuck out to me was when it comes to controlling things. And um, this is something I had to learn when I was younger as well, is is basically your mindset, if you control your mindset, you can really free yourself up. Because I used to think um, if if you have the, the wrong mindset, I, I can't remember the professor. There was a, um, a professor from Stanford who had mentioned, you know, we have fixed mindset and we have growth mindset. Um, Carol Dweck. Yes, I, that's it. Thank you. Excellent. So I'm not alone. So yes, Carol Dweck, that's it. And there was fixed mindset and there's growth mindset. And I had to learn this myself. And at a, when I was younger, I had this fixed mindset where I was like, I am not going to delve into anything that I'm not an expert at or that I th perceive myself to be an expert at. And that kind of held me back. It kept me from taking risks that would uh, or going into things that I wouldn't normally do that where I could actually be successful if I actually applied myself. So it kind of put me in this little box. So instead you go to this, what she called a, a growth mindset where th that way you, you have basically you're believing in yourself. And um, when you do that, you believe in yourself that opens you up to more things that you can get involved in or in, uh, you know, in anything, really in anything in life, um, it really opens you up and it allows you to, to grow. And so um, it's very important. So your mindset is something you could, everybody can control. You have, but you have to force yourself to move from that fixed mindset to that growth mindset. But, and I also think, Len, there's another aspect. To that. I love that aspect, but I think there's another aspect to this. It's an election year, and we talk about control what you can. How many people are going to get distracted from what you can control this year? Like, th that's what's going to happen. If you're going to blow up your game plan, that's, that's, that's it. I mean, I, we had Jen Drummond, the first woman to uh, summit all of the uh, second highest peaks on every uh, continent on, on Monday, talking about, uh, you you have to battle distraction. You got to stay away from distraction. And I think, Len, of, of all of the dangers this year, the election poses a big one for most investors. I guess, yeah. So I, I, are you saying that um, if, depending on who you think might win, you, you're going to alter your, your investing strategy ahead of time? Absolutely. That, we yeah, had a, so. yeah, yeah, we had an episode with Fidelity and T. Rowe Price and a behavioral economist, Dr. Brad Klontz, uh, back in November at the one year, one year to go. And people can go back and listen to this. But all three of them said you, you, you no professional money manager bases their strategy. No professional advisor bases their strategy on the results of an election. Yeah, uh, they don't. Historically, historically, whatever you think about which party is going to be better, historically, that's never been the case. It's it's never worked out the way or had the impact that you thought that. It, I'm not telling people not to vote, but I'm saying that that the ball didn't end up going the way you thought it would. Well, I, I was thinking, you know, you're better off picking, you know, the winner of the Super Bowl. Doesn't the winner of the Super Bowl usually, whether it's an NFC team or AFC team, predict whether the stock market's oh, actually right. going to be better? Probably better off <laughs> doing <is>. that. <laughs> and, and we're not even advocating that. No. But by the way, go Lions. I just got to say, yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, gee, that's got to be the hardest part of your job right now is getting people to avoid distractions and stay on the stay on the ball. The last couple of years have been pretty interesting because, you know, obviously 2022, the market was down 21. It was up a whole bunch. All the YOLO GME, you know, GameStop, Robin Hood type stuff right into 2022 with the market down 20 percent. And then the market recovered nicely the early 23, then went down a whole bunch in the middle of 23. And then, you know, for the last six or eight weeks of the year, skyrocketed. Yeah. And it was such a great lesson in there's no way to, pr to predict that stuff in advance because no one would have thought during COVID or at the beginning of COVID that the market would recover as quickly as it did. 
I mean, in hindsight, you see the playing cards. You can say, oh, well, there was so much stimulus and bank interest rates. Of course, the market went up. Yeah, but that's not what you thought <laughs> during the middle of COVID. Nobody was thinking, you know what's going to happen? The market's going to go up 100%. That's what we should double down. Nobody <laughs> thought that at the time. No different than at the beginning of 23, there weren't people lining up to stuff their brokerage accounts full of money because, oh, we're down 20%. This is a great time to invest. And here we are at the beginning of 24 on the heels of a really great fourth quarter in the market. And now everybody thinks they're geniuses when it comes to stock picking again, because, you know, seven stocks led the way. And the reality is, is that none of this means anything about anything. It doesn't have a, yesterday doesn't have any effect on tomorrow in terms of your investment, except for the fact that you need to be invested and you need to just do the same thing according to your plan for a very, very, very long time. It just, like you said, don't be distracted by whether it's the market or the interest rates or which election you think might win, be won or be lost or by whom or who's getting hosed by which, you know, it just, None of that matters. Your your financial goals are thirty years away. You know what? You know what helps though too, OG, and you know this obviously. Is it, if if you're diversified, right? That's that's the whole purpose of diversification. You don't have to worry about where you're going to hit the home runs and which ones are going to fall. If you're fully diversified and broadly diversified, you know things should even out uh, to the, or smooth out the ups and downs. So, yeah, but then you go back to what Paula said at the beginning, and you see. Hey, you know, my diversified account last year was up 15%, 16% probably, somewhere in there, 17, feeling pretty good. And then you pull out the news and you go, well, crap, how come I didn't get any of that plus 150% from my, you know, my buddy got an NVIDIA call options. Yeah, or even, or, the, the, even the NASDAQ index was up 43%. Just as you could have said, oh, I just thrown it in the NASDAQ index. Should have just done it all in tech stocks. But that's greed, right? But then you're getting it. That's you're getting into greed. So, see what I'm saying? I mean, that when you have that mindset, you're actually you're getting greedy. So rather than being happy with most people should be very happy with a 10, 12, 15 percent return. You know, should be extremely happy. Absolutely. But, but these days, everybody wants to get you know, they want to they want to be millionaires in two or three years and they want these humongous returns that really aren't, you know. I saw this math equation, Len, maybe you've done this on your site because you're a little bit more analytical than most. And I haven't double checked it, but uh, but it was a chart and I don't remember the dollar amount. It was something like saving a thousand a month or something like that, you know, some reasonably decent savings rate. Um, but it was something like if you're saving a thousand a month, when you get to 300,000, you're halfway to a million. Because of the fact, because of the way that compounding works, mm. you know, your money will start compounding faster yes. and faster and faster. So, you know, I think that's the other piece of this when it comes to investing and diversification, all that sort of stuff. We never see the benefit of it and we never see the benefit of compounding because we're right in the middle of it. We don't see the compounding until we look backwards over a long period of time and we go, oh my gosh, I've only put in $200,000. This. this is a great example, social security. All three of you guys are getting close to that. So you should probably be doing some math on it. <laughs> but over your lifetimes, you look every at how much dude. <laughs> every <laughs> chance he gets. You, you know, go look at go look at your social security and how much money you've put into the social security system. And you go, Well, that's a lot of cash. And then you go, Well, how how many months am I gonna get all this, you know, two twenty five hundred bucks, three thousand dollars a month for forty years? Like that's the ROI. But you don't see that ROI when you're making that investment, air quotes investment in Social Security, or you don't see the ROI when you're putting in, you know, eight hundred dollars a month in your four hundred one k and getting a little bit of a company match. You see it on the back end when you're, uh, you know, reflecting on progress. It's just a weird investing is a weird dynamic, and you just have to trust it. Let's stick with you, OG, and uh, give us one you like here. Oh, I absolutely went with the easy one uh, for me, which is number 22, sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody makes fun of me for my sleep, but it's super important. You have to have energy for all of these, all of these things. You know, I mean, it's just not, you have so just a finite amount of decision-making. You have a finite amount of ability to do planning and to provide for your family and to exercise and to, and to eat right. Like when do you eat crappy? 
do you eat crappy the first meal of the day? I mean, Doug does every meal of the day. But, you know, like you, when you make good, you know, bad decisions, you make it when you're tired and at the end of the day and all that sort of stuff. Like, and the reason that happens is because we do dumb stuff like play on our phones until two in the morning and, and then try to get four hours of sleep and it's just miserable. Go to bed at oh, 10 o'clock. I, it's like he's speaking a foreign language. I, I don't understand any of the things he's saying. <laughs> I know. I started tracking for the first time uh, this last year uh, uh, alcohol consumption. Uh, oh. and and sleep hold on hold on it's checking my notes sobering isn't it <laughs> uh, he still got it <laughs> no it's the wrong one no it was the right one you meant that one oh sorry <laughs> yeah battle of the buttons there uh joe do i get to claim any of these joe <laughs> well, let's let's talk about sleep for a second, Mister. Uh, I don't even know what this one means, so let's move on. Uh, uh, Paula, sleep sleep interests you. <laughs> you you know I love sleep so wow. much. I I, uh, I do it every evening. Yeah, wow. every, does every, that, into the does morning. Does that pickup line work for you in bars, Joe? <laughs> does, does sleep interest you? Sleep interest you? <laughs> bars me. Non-sleep. Is passed out officially sleep, or is that kind of yeah, like I, a... It is. No, it, it is, is sleep. It's terrible it sleep, sleep, but it's, okay. but it's sleep. And, and to your point, Joe, you were talking about tracking this stuff. There's so many different there's so many different ways to do that. Your bed does it. Aura rings do it. Whoops do it. Apple watches do it. All these different yeah, places. Garmin. You can, Garmin. You can see all, these, all this data on the decisions that you make and how it affects your ability to perform the next day. I should know. I'm wearing an Aura ring... I'm wearing a Whoop, and I'm wearing an Apple Watch. Yes, the trifecta. <laughs> I have all three. Every also. government agency possible can track That's right. It. Yes. Do you? I mean, it all matches up, doesn't it, Paula? Yes. Like all of the yeah. data is pretty much spot on. Yeah. And, it's it's, um, it's interesting wearing three different trackers because I, I sort of get a range of, uh, I get a range of results. So I can look really? across. Yeah, not not so much for sleep. That's relatively consistent. But when yeah. it comes to their estimates of how many calories I'm burning in a day, yeah. uh, the estimates of like how hard I'm working in a workout, you know, uh, zone two versus zone three versus zone four in a workout. Yeah. There, there seems to be quite a range there. So my coach and I, mm -hmm. yeah, my coach and I, Paula, a, a, a few years ago talked about, she, she talked about data and I'm like, yeah, but, 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 you know, am I going to use this data? She goes, if it's right in front of you, Sooner or later, you're going to look at it. And I have to say that has been the case as I get as I get this metabolic data um, and about my sleep patterns, about my workouts, about all this stuff. I find I become more and more interested in it just because it's there. Like if you her her advice for me to buy this watch to track stuff, maybe not three. That might be a little overboard, Paula, <laughs> but uh, but it was was huge. Like get the Paula. data. I've got them. It's like it's like oh. the, the Wonder Twins. Yeah, the Whoop and the Apple Watch. Yeah. So, so Paula, uh, Paula told us at a uh, at a uh, time in the future, which will be undisclosed. Where are you headed, Paula? China. Yes. You know why? Now that she's got all these trackers, we know she's just reporting in. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> she's. I'm 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 the person responsible for this tracker, this tracker, this tracker that you've been tracking. Yes. No need for satellite data. I'm bringing it to you, China. <laughs> if you don't have a spy balloon, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> no need to invest in that. I'll bring it in. Uh, 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 Len, how much tracking do you do? And 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 uh, and the sleep well, thing. You on the sleep train? I, I'm not, you know, I, as I get older, my sleep pattern is just miserable. I mean, I, I fall asleep for four hours then I wake up, I lay in bed for, for two or three. My mind's just going over a bajillion things. I can't fall asleep. Then I fall back asleep for a couple hours and I wake up. That's my, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. About all those rings though, Paul, I know you had a, you had a, you didn't have a mood ring. And, uh, you know, oh no, that, that's like a well, 12 year old kind of a thing. Well, I was going <laughs> to, you know, I, I was, I, I, once, I, thing. I bought a mood ring so my family would know how I was feeling. And I figured, you know what, all they had to do is look at my face every day and then they know exactly how I'm feeling. They don't need the dumb <laughs> mood ring to look at that. So that was a waste of money. Xi Jinping tells Paula how, what her mood is. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> 
Paula gets the encoded message every morning about what her mood should be. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming up next, we're going to dive into six more of these. I absolutely love this list. Again, go to our show notes page, stackybenjamins.com, and uh, – and scroll down to the show notes and you can read this entire list, but we're going to tackle three more from the humble dollar.com each Friday. For those of you new to stacky Benjamins, we have a year long competition between Paula Len and OG uh, trivia contest where uh, last year, Len Penzo reclaimed the throne. I believe Len, that was your third that's title. Number th yes. Uh, that's number three. Yeah. Well, Hey, when, when do I get that? Oh, gee. Yeah, I got to mail it to you. I was going to bring it because I was in your neighborhood the other day. And then I thought, it looks just so great right here with your name on it. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just hold on to it. You never know what Len will do with it there in the bunker. I know. <laughs> yes, that's right. Oh, no. It's coming in the mail. Melt it down for its gold. <laughs> <laughs> Feels mostly plastic, but. That's what he figures out, Doug, exactly how much we spent on that at the dollar <laughs> store. Right. Uh, uh, we often, we ask a question and uh, the closest answer wins. We do this every week uh, throughout the year. And man, it has been close. And Paula, you almost, almost, almost came close to winning. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. You didn't almost. come close, but you almost came close. Almost. I remember when I came back into the competition, you told me that I was in a three-way tie for first. I think yes. that was how I entered. It, yes. Of course, there's only three of us, so that and means I last. was also in a three-way tie for <laughs> middle and last. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, Paula, how are, you, how are you doing sitting on the floor? You going to be okay? Fantastic. I've, I've got I've got my yoga mat next to me. I've yeah. got uh, a gigantic water, 40 ounces, bigger than my head. Paula, I've had <laughs> placemats at Denny's that look cushier than that yoga mat. I know. <laughs> it's, it's a little tiny. Do you have the yoga right. goats, too? Uh, Wait, or the yoga goats? <laughs> Oh, no, no goats here. No, okay. no yoga, right. yoga related animals at all. I talk to your parents about that. Tell them, <laughs> tell them, you know what you need? You need a couple goats. Goat yoga. In this back bedroom. Where the hell are we going? Are we doing trivia? Let's get the trivia. Let's get this year's trivia contest started, Doug. What, what do we, what do we got here? Hey there, stackers. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. This past weekend, I finally caught up with this brand new ish documentary called drive to survive on netflix and man it was incredible all those drivers spending a lifetime working on their cars and racing skills and then getting to drive through city streets all over the world it's pretty unbeatable as far as hobbies go you gotta make it an olympic sport hey don't tell my camino but sometimes i daydream of souping her up and entering her in races i know it'd be hard on my sweet car but I know I'd win. I mean, I've already got driving gloves and a bike helmet, so I'm halfway there. I bet if I got enough wins under my belt in the El Camino, I could get someone to sponsor me to race an F1. The way I drive, I'm honestly surprised no one's approached me yet. I've already got the skills, plus I'm really good, so good looking. And it'd be a huge win for any company that wants to sponsor me. I could even get Joe to donate on behalf of Stacking Benjamins. That would be, it would be huge for the podcast, Joe. Sponsor me. Today's trivia question oh, there's is. there's a trivia question. <laughs> there it is. It's coming. Just had to make my pitch to the man. Today's trivia question is because one of the biggest teams in Formula One is Mercedes. And today, head of Mercedes racing program, Toto Wolf's birthday. Today. So, totally related question. How much does a Formula One car cost? Oh, I'll be right back after I get my jumpsuit tailored, you know, just in case. I totally thought it was going to be how old is Toto Wolf turning? That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is he related to Toto from, uh, from um, The Wizard he, of Oz? He founded the band, dog, Toto. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Stuck in Africa. Um, Toto, Toto Wolf. Uh, and by the way, that, that, that series, Doug, you've seen that series drive to survive. Fantastic. First two seasons. Even if you yeah, don't like, really even if you don't like racing, just great series about, um, egos and budgets and, and believe it or not racing. 
All right, let's start with the winner of Benjamin in the Box. It was uh, what we played, Len, uh, uh, the the week after we finished the competition. Paula lost that, which means OG gets to go first. OG, uh, no, which means you get to go last. Sorry, I'm doing this backwards. It means OG gets to go last. <laughs> Len Penzo, you're the winner. You got to go first. Uh, Formula One car, what does it cost? Uh, let's see. I, you know, uh, do they sell those on Amazon? Can I check real quick? <laughs> Alibaba. <laughs> Alibaba. You know what? I, gosh, I don't know, but I bet it's a lot of money. Um, let's say, um, it's gotta be in the millions. I would say, um, I'll say $2.5 million. $2.5 million. Paula, that seemed higher low. To, you're a big racing fan. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, sure, yes. There's cars, and they go in a circle around a track. What's not What's not to love? When Doug even called you Danica Patrick, did that go over your head? Did you know uh, Danica? No, no, I'm, I'm familiar with Danica Patrick. She is the spokesperson for GoDaddy.com. Did you know she was a race car driver? I, I did know that. Yes, oh, I did. Good, okay. I did. <laughs> just just I, check it in. I did also know that. <laughs> Never doubted you for a second. Never <laughs> doubted you. Uh, let's see. Well, my goal with this answer is to leave a wide berth. <laughs> Paula. Just which direction do I go in? Lenny said 2.5? I did. I'll go with 1.2. There we go. Oh, gee, there's the field goal. <clears throat> 1.2 million, 2.5 million, formula. So one. My, my thought was exactly 1.2. That's what I was going <laughs> to go with. So Paula forked me. Um, the, the, the right answer is to take all of the upside. 2.2. Five to infinity. I just don't think a car's. I mean, a Bugatti is like two million, you know. So I don't think so. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, cap Paula off at the knees and say one point two million and one cent. There it is. He takes the middle ground, the middle of the middle, and. Uh... That's the way we play the game, everybody. We've got 2.5 million, 1.2, 1.2.0001, or whatever that might be. We'll tell you who's right in just a second. Len, you kicked it off with 2.5 million. Apparently, uh, these other two Yahoos think you might have been way north of what the cost should be on a Formula One car. What are you thinking? I'm thinking I'm going to win this. I, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. It's got to be very expensive. All the engineering and crap that goes into a F1, I, I just think it's it ain't cheap. It ain't cheap. Paula, now that you've got uh, 1.2 million, but only numbers south of that, you feeling good? Yeah, I mean, I've got uh, a wide range of numbers, so I'd, I'd say it's... <laughs> I've got 1.2 million different numbers. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> so if it's a dollar, I am set. <laughs> if they're having a sale on the car, yes. Oh, gee, got the middle of the middle. Feeling good? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I was feeling, I was feeling 1.2, and so uh, Len's probably winning it again. Figures. Well, as a uh, as a Formula One fan, I think you're going to be surprised by what this number is. Uh, Doug, what's our answer? I am embarrassed for all of our panelists, Joe. <laughs> hey, stackers, I'm expert driver and jumpsuit model, Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug. During the break, I did a little research, and it turns out that driving in the F1 is pretty hard on your body and really important to me to keep myself in top physical shape so I can help Joe's mom around the house. So it looks like I won't be entering the race after all. That's Sorry the to reason. Disappoint everybody. Yeah, that's the reason. But still, you know, I look good in the jumpsuit. Today's question was, how much does a Formula One car cost? The answer, while it's no surprise that car racing is an expensive hobby, in order to compete in an F1 race, your first step should be to make sure you got a whole bunch of rich friends because the average car for this prestigious series hovers around... Well, 
15 million dollars more than what Paula and OG guessed, just 13 and a half million more than what Paul would Len guessed, because it's 16 million dollars. I wonder if I could finance one of those through Klarna. <laughs> <laughs> if you pay the 16 million, just pay after I win in six months. Like I'll take the prize yeah. money, pay off Klarna. Zero sum. So all you got to do just just have drop it off in Monaco. You go in the race, see what you got to do. Bada boom, bada bing. That's what you got to do. Uh, uh, Len, you surprised that uh, while you won, you were only you just sucked less, Len. <laughs> well, yeah, that was uh, that was pretty bad. Yeah, that was a bad. Hey, you know what? I'm going to take it. It's, it's a win is a win. All right, so we'll take it. Time for the second half of our discussion of uh, Jonathan Clements' 24 rules for 2024. Brought to you by Deposit Accounts from Lending Tree. You know, when you go to depositaccounts.com, Len, guess what happens? $2.5 million. <laughs> <laughs> that is not what happens. I wouldn't have enough to get a buy my own F1, right? So I don't know. Hey, Joe, why don't you tell us what happens? Oh, you find out that you can compare more than 275,000 deposit rates from over 11,000 banks and credit unions. And Len, you can do that all for free. I know. I pinch yourself. It. I love it. High yield savings accounts, CD rates, checking accounts, money markets, ID rates. They have a blog. There's a forum where you can talk to other people. They talk about all the different banks and how different people like different banks. Groovy. All of it in one site. And... When you first go there, you can see what savings account rates are. And let's take a look. This is released uh, a few days before you're hearing this. So go to depositaccounts.com yourself. But listen to this. If you've got the national average savings account, 0.5% is what you're getting. But if you're in the top 1%, 4.94 APY, which is up a little bit from last week. CD rates down a little bit from last week. A one-year CD, if you're in the top 1%, 5.66. You'll find all these and more at depositaccounts.com. All right, let's dive in to Mr. Clement's uh, 24 rules for 2024. We'll go backwards this time. OG, why don't you kick it off? Oh, Kidoki, how's about number 12? Simplify. Simplify, Ooh. simplify, simplify. Simplify your life. Why you like that one? So we started this uh, last year in the fall. We were um, kind of doing a, you know, a little bit of an update on the financial plan, inventory, you know, that sort of deal. And uh, we figured out we had 11 different banking relationships, not 11 accounts, 11 different places where, where cash was just for our personal stuff. And then add the businesses and, you know, all the relationships there. And I was like, this is so dumb because I was spending so much time every single week balancing that, you know, that, that, that 11 bank, whatever you want to call it, menage a trois of, of trying to get all the money in the right place for where the, where all, where all the, where all the money was supposed to be. Who's taking money from where? Is it like Menage 11? Menage <laughs> Twa times Twa plus two. It's <laughs> <laughs> math, people. Exactly. Who knew he was multilingual? <laughs> yes. Clean it up. Just, just make your life simpler. You don't need to have 42 Roth IRAs. You don't need to have your old 401k still at the old place. Probably there's maybe one circumstance you would, you know, like just, just do an inventory and go, what can I, what can I consolidate? What can I make my life easier? Cause it's not just making your life easier. It's making your spouse's life easier. If you get hit by a bus, make your kid's life easier when you get hit by a bus, just, just make your life easy. I like this idea of simplification because uh, David Allen in the great book, getting things done talks about being like water. And it's impossible to be like water and flow in, in your day if you're just so bogged down in the weeds by 5,000 knickknacks around you and, and uh, you know, 11 bank accounts, all these different relationships. And yet, Paula, you will see often among money nerds, we go the opposite way. We're so interested in saving a dollar, saving 50 cents, we, th we forget about the big picture of we're probably better off if we think, about thousands of dollars instead of, you know, oh, I can get 50 cents if I have an 11th bank account. Yes, exactly. So this is something uh, 
This is something I've written about several times, and I, I write about it because I've, I've myself have had to kind of come to this realization the hard way that simplifying is better than over-optimizing, right? In the personal finance uh, community, it's so tempting to overly optimize, right? And, and chase high yield savings account after high yield savings account after high yield savings account because the interest rate at, you know, bank A is now a handful of basis points better than bank B, right? So it's su super tempting to do that. It's super tempting. You know, the other day I had a, a con an award travel consultation with, uh, with Jason Steele, our, our mutual friend, Jason Steele, right? And going into it, he said, hey, can you make a, an inventory for me of all of your credit cards? And I was like, that's easy. I got one personal card. I got one business card. Boom, two, done. And he was like, oh, wow, I wasn't expecting that. Normally when I say, when I ask people, you know, can you, can you make an inventory of all your cards? They had me a list of 15 cards, yeah. right? Um, There's so, OGs. <laughs> Is that is that a stack of for those of you that's, watching on YouTube? That's he's a holding stack. up a gigantic. Oh my goodness, that is actually a thing. Yeah, hold it closer to the those camera because like we didn't see the Cole's CVV gift cards. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're all they're all twenty five dollar Amazon cards. This guy called and said it was really important that I pick him up and give him the numbers. It was something uh, yeah. something for my boss. He the, texted. The, the IRS wants their uh, their back taxes, but they want it in the form of Kroger they want gift it cards. In the, form, in the <laughs> yeah. form of Apple gift cards. And you got to do it right now. And, and it absolutely yeah. has to be done, or the authorities will be here immediately. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is part of the part of the simplifying game, also. Wow, getting, okay, getting rid so of that. I have. I, I was just counting while you were talking, Paula. I have seven mm. uh, different cards. Uh, how many do you have, Len? I have. Are you counting gasoline credit cards too? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so I have do four. You really have a gas card? You've you I, four. I do. <laughs> hey, you know what? Uh, the and OG the, looks so like he's got twenty five. One of the one yeah. of the companies gives me gives me 10 cents i know it's not a lot but you know what every penny was counting there for a while when gasoline was really expensive i was getting 10 cents off uh regular gasoline or 15 cents off a gallon of premium with that card for every gallon how so how many gallons do you fill per week uh probably i i, I probably <laughs> I, you know what? I think I drove 1,200 miles last year. <laughs> so, yeah, it's stupid, many, people. I understand. I'll turn in my card tomorrow, okay? 120 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and Doug has one like Paula has. Has one. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One card. Yeah. yeah. And, that's, and Right on, sister. And OG's yeah. got 147 cards. One personal, cards. one business. There's, there's oh, I don't even done. have. Yeah, just the one. Yeah, there's 24 here. I uh, 24 accounts. There's more than that in cards. But there's probably five in my wallet, I bet. So 30, 30, 32. You know what? There is a danger. That if you only have one credit card, what happens if your what happens if your credit card gets canceled or they, you know, you go, you're out somewhere and that then the credit card, they for whatever, because this has happened to me, you've gone, you're out and boop, declined, card declined. Yeah. Does that happen to you? I mean, that's happened to me before. Yeah, then what do you do? Me. That's happened to me a handful. I still have a debit card. So I can either use the debit card if I need to swipe plastic or tap plastic these days or uh, use the debit card to withdraw cash and then pay for things in cash. So easy enough. I I'm just say you get everybody else at the table to pick up your tab. <laughs> I just say, <laughs> can I write you a check? <laughs> yeah. Do you guys take personal checks? <laughs> I've got, How about money I've got order? a shell gas card. <laughs> <laughs> can I wire transfer? <laughs> can, do you take American Express traveler's checks? <laughs> I only carry those when I go outside Texas. Do they still have those? Do they still have traveler's checks? Do they have those? Oh, my God. When I was a kid, I remember going on long trips with my dad, and he'd have a whole ton of traveler's well, checks. Well, then you get, your check, you get your traveler's checks and your trip tick. Yeah, there you and go. And the trip go. tick. Yes, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. We're ready to rock and roll. Yeah, everybody, welcome to Old Guy Stories for the win <laughs> right there. All right. Let's, we saved let's, this for uh, the porch. <laughs> let's, I love the idea, OG, of simplification. I think that is so important. And back on our New Year's Day episode, Eric Qualman uh, talked about it's impossible to focus if, if you don't get 
get things simplified. Len, uh, what is uh, another one you really like on this list? I like the last one on this list, and I really it resonated with me, and it's use those savings. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, for people who have a savings mindset, you know, as you, and you go your whole life saving and then it comes time you retire like I have, and you've got this portfolio, you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it takes an adjustment to, to start thinking spending, you know, you've, you've saved, you spent your whole life saving and now it's time to go ahead and enjoy what you've saved the, the fruits of, you know, those savings, you know, I, I think that's very important. I mean, what's, what's the point of saving all that money, not to, you know, to be afraid to spend it down. So um, I, I think that's important. And then for the younger people, I think there's kind of a corollary to that and don't be afraid to splurge actually. Uh, you know, if you just go through and you're constantly saving and you're, you, you kind of, um, you know, money, the whole point of money is, is to make life worth living. And even when you're younger, I mean, if you're just saving every single penny that you can and not enjoying life, I think you're making a big mistake. So uh, I think it's okay to splurge when you're younger as well, occasionally. You know, Jonathan uh, Clements, the author of this piece, uh, he wrote a great book on that same thing, Len, uh, called My Money Journey, which is written in part, the, the individual stories are written by people that have written for the Humble Dollar or Friends of Jonathan's. And that story resonates over and over, Len, about people not spending their money or getting the aha that, you know what, I got to, like Jonathan says here, it, it may feel comfortable to sit on a fat stack of cash, but um, but if you spend all this time building it. Why? Yeah. Why, why, not? Why, why were you right? If that's how you were going to be, what was the point? What was the point? If you, if it wasn't, if you weren't going to spend it and enjoy life later, I mean, but I, I, I do understand it is a hard, it's a hard, it's difficult for me still. I mean, to, to, um, I still have that urge to squirrel away money if, if possible and save, but, um, yeah, th- there comes a time when you retire, Hey, that's what, you know, you got to realize what your goal was, from way back when and, and, and act on it. Once you've done your savings, congratulations and start enjoying. Just in the, just over a decade that, uh, that I've known you, Paula, I've kind of felt your, your feelings about this have changed. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super into spending money now. Um, it's way more fun, the... <laughs> isn't it? I'm a big fan. <laughs> I'm a huge fan it. of spending money. <laughs> yeah, you know, back in the, when I was in my 20s, I, I suffered from a, a lot of self-doubt, a lot of insecurity. And part of that was not having the confidence to believe that I could make money. And so because I didn't believe that I could make money, or at least make good money, I wanted to cling on to every single penny. I was super, super, super cheap because I didn't believe in my own abilities to go out there and just and make more, right? And, and make more in a, in a big, meaningful way. Now, I have that confidence. I know that I can make more. So I'm uh, much more happy to spend I agree with the confidence part, but don't you think over that time, you've also gained uh, uh, skills and relationships that, frankly, at at that younger age would have been much more difficult to have developed? I'd say yes, yes. And I would say the biggest skill was learning how to create um, my own projects, learning how to, you know, it's a bit of a cliche to say like learning entrepreneurship or, but it's true learning how to go into business for yourself, even if it's at a, a micro scale, right. Learning how to offer new services and new products to a market is so much more lucrative than going to work for somebody else, particularly in the field that I was in, right. As a, as a journalist, I might be different if you're a, an anesthesiologist. Um, but but in the field that I was in, uh, going to work for somebody else was never going to pay a lot. And learning the skill of developing out my own projects, my own products, my own services, that is the key skill that uh, tells me that that I can earn. Therefore, I can spend. OG, for you, <laughs> I ask how OG feels about spending money. Uh, <laughs> we definitely know that. But but you've got people, OG, that, that hire you, I'm sure, that need to need need to rein it in. I mean, finding that, that, that tipping point, I think would be the phrase is the important part. Yeah. I mean, there really is a balancing act between, between tomorrow and today. And, um, 
and knowing how to how to how to kind of work between all of those things, I think is super important. There's also different uh, phases in your life. There's different times throughout your you kind of seasons of your life, which are high spend times. And I think just being aware of those as well is going to help a ton. We very openly last week went to the Rose Bowl. We talked about that. Thankfully, the airline flights, which was a big convoluted travel schedule, you know, paid for all of that on points. But then the football team won. So we're going to go to Houston for that. So there's, you know, all of this is an experience thing. And Liz and I were talking about it and said, this fits with our kind of new thinking around experiences versus a lot of stuff. And um, I I feel a lot better about like taking my kids and my in-laws and stuff to things that are fun and kind of once in a lifetime experiences versus, you know, accumulating another item. You know what I mean? Like something that's just going to, wear out eventually or something like that. How, how do you feel about taking podcast hosts on experiences? I asked you if you were coming <laughs> and you said, um, no, you didn't say, would you like me to pay for you to come? My answer <laughs> would have been so decidedly different. I, I wasn't going to offer that. I was going to see what you were going to say first. And you were a jackass. So no, <laughs> now I'm coming. you now. noticed you didn't get to show up on Monday for the game. I, d- I do like to stop the kids from fighting. I do like uh, uh, an ancillary or, or an offshoot of, of one of these ones that you, that, that you picked, uh, which is number 14 on his list. Anticipate good times. When you book those experiences, he says, book them as far in advance as possible so that you delight in the anticipation of it, which is totally Totally true. I love thinking about the fact that this fall I'm going to go to Nepal. I love hearing about it too. I'm going to go to Nepal and I'm going to tell you guys about it. Eighty-seven thousand, or not this fall, this spring. This what spring. This spring. You're this going spring. I'm going April. to Nepal. Yeah, I won't talk about where I'm going this fall yet, but but this spring <laughs> I'm going to oh, Nepal, and uh, and I can't wait. We booked it. We booked the trip uh, last uh, last year, last summer, and I'm so geeked about it. Oh, you idea. know where I'm going in the spring. Texas Canada. Texas Canada. You are coming Texarkana. to Texas Canada. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. On purpose. <laughs> on purpose. On purpose. I'm going to be watching uh, Joe's cat Cooper while yes. he's in Nepal. <laughs> going to hang out with Cooper and see the uh, see the. the I should have charged Paul a big money. I should because the eclipse coming over our house and there's plenty of houses around here that are being rented for lots of money. Lots of people yeah. want to see yeah, the eclipse. Oh, oh, don't don't worry. I will uh, surreptitiously rent your house and pocket the cash yeah. without you <laughs> knowing. Uh, <laughs> did you did you tell her that you Paul's live like, in a oh, forest, I'm, I'm, Joe? <laughs> what that the what OG? I said, did you tell her that you live in a forest with seventy foot pine trees all over? She's been there. She's been here. Okay. Yeah, I've been there. Yes, but, but that is a good point. I'll have to like sit in the middle of the street. Oh, I'll sit right at the Texas Arkansas state line to she watch will. the eclipse. She, there we go. But, yeah, so, Paul will have a tent in the backyard and rent my house out for me. <laughs> and not so tell me are, let me get this straight. People are going to Texarkana to see it get dark. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do they know that it happens <laughs> every <see> night? <laughs> To not see the town. <laughs> yes, to not see it. There may be a little irony there, Doug. There, there might be j- just just a bit. Uh, Len, apparently the party's at my house while I'm not here. So if you want to come out to Texarkana too. When is and, the eclipse? Uh, I'm actually going to Indiana in April. Is that, is that, uh, is that. It's in the, is it, it's in the. Uh, it might be April the 10th April or something. 8th? Eight, yeah, 10th? April oh, okay. 8th. April no, but 8th. I think it'll be later than that. All right. Because there's a chance yeah. if it's going over Texarkana, it might have uh, passed over Indiana as well. But uh, yeah, because they're close. They're close. <laughs> yeah, it's on that path there. <laughs> what Spiritually, if you at a map? Southern Indiana and <laughs> Texarkana are brother and very. Oh, similar. hey, come on! <laughs> I've Texarkana and Indiana takes that as fighting words. Uh, uh, let's do one more here, Paula. Wrap us up. All right, number ten which is take a time inventory. Oh, right? yeah. What is it that you do every day that's unnecessary? And what is it that you do every day that's valuable? And I would actually take this one step further. So the tip that I got from Laura Vanderkam, the best-selling author who specializes in time management, is to, for at least a week, write out every single thing that you do in 15-minute increments. Uh, ideally if you can write it on a piece of paper so that you don't get distracted by your phone. 
but write out everything you do, every minute of your day in 15 minute increments. Obviously you can't do this forever. That, that's not sustainable, but do it for one week and you will be shocked at what your time inventory tells you about yourself. So I think that this is, that's a good annual practice. Uh, it's a great way to kick off a new year. I absolutely love Laura Vandekam's work, Paula, and uh, a woman that I met in Bali, Lacey Philippich from, uh, from Australia, has a great book called Money School. She, she, she says, as you're putting the things down, put it in one of three columns. The middle column is just must do. And the other two columns on one side of just do is gold. I need to keep this in my day. And the other side is <laughs> this is the stuff I need to get rid of. And she talks about increasing your gold ratio, make much more gold, much less every day. I just love that. Taking Laura's time calendar, writing everything down, but then putting it one of those three columns uh, really worked for me. Oh, gee, I feel like uh, I feel like with your work with Strategic Coach, you must have done some of this time time uh, thought process. Is this worth my time to be involved in? Yeah. Yeah. And they break it down into, you know, work related things around unique ability and what things you're good at and not good at. Um, but this is a great exercise to do, you know, in 15 minute increments. I, I don't, you know, 15, 30 minute increments of just keeping an inventory of, of what you actually do. It's I'm, I'm with Paula. This is super, 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 eye opening, especially because the first like the first little bit that you do it, you're like hyper sensitive of it. You're like, uh, opening mail, 10 minutes. And then after a while, you forget about it. And then you just do it. And then you get the real honesty, like after your brain shuts off the filtering system of trying to impress yourself with all of right. the things that you're like, exercise, doing push ups, you know, whatever you're <laughs> 600 <laughs> seconds. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ran mile plank only for took 15 four minutes. Solid minutes. <laughs> right. Yes, exactly. <laughs> no, 15 seconds on the plank. Yeah. Yes. So uh, um, I, I, I do think this is a good idea. Something that you, that everybody can do, whether it's personal or work or both, for for just a week and and see what see what comes up. I I will say when I did it, this is this is a few several years ago. I was still living in Vegas, but there was what I call zombie time that just escaped, like. You know, I would, I would be in the kitchen, I'd wrap up breakfast, I'd wrap up coffee, and then there would be this 15-minute lag time between making it from my kitchen to literally my home office, which is next the next room. Like and distraction I have, time. No, I have literally no idea. It's like falling into the twilight zone for 15 minutes and then emerging and being like, ah, all right, I've made it from the kitchen to the home office. Len, was there ever some engineering way you took care of this? Thought about a, a time management system? Um, I, you know, I just used a calendar. But I mean, that's that was how I managed my time when I was in the working world. You know, I, I, I and I when I said calendar, it's not just meetings. I calendar. I put on my calendar yeah. for my workday every single thing. Work this problem or go visit this person for this reason. Fix your car. Uh, everything. Every my day was planned out. Uh, Monday through Friday from the time I woke up to the time I went to bed, basically on my calendar. The other great advantage of doing that in a corporate environment, Len, is then that blocks off time in your calendar that other people can't. Correct. Correct. As a meeting. matter of fact, <laughs> yes. Oh, no. As a matter of fact, on my calendar, I had, because everybody in the corporate world, everybody, if you choose, they have access to your calendar. So, and I would put yeah. on there, uh, my private time, do not disturb. And I would block off two and three hour blocks in work hours where nobody could contact me. And if they tried to contact me, I'd say, did you check my calendar? Because you're not supposed to be contacting me right now. So yes. on the January 1st episode, Eric Qualman called that uh, cowboy fencing about fencing off large open areas and making sure that, and for most people it's in the morning, like first thing when you still have brain power and, and fence off that area in your calendar and say, this is the time when I'm going to do, I'm going to get this stuff done. Yep. But I think it all starts Paula with your inventory of what am I, what am I, you know, doing I, I will say this. So once you're retired, you don't care about this time stuff anymore. It makes absolutely no difference how you know, I'm spending 15 minutes doing this and 20. It doesn't matter because I, I'm retired. You know what? I got all the time in the world. Brag, I can bragger. waste it on whatever I want. Bragger. <laughs> Scoreboard. <laughs> there, 
There it is. I don't know. I, I think time, doesn't time still still you still have goals. You got stuff you want to do. It still matters. Well, well what uh, work on my choo choo train, uh, go out and shoot nine out, you know, hop, go play nine holes of golf, go walk around the block, you know, watch the squirrels in the backyard. I mean, that's it's pretty. <laughs> It's pretty lame. <laughs> Len's got a complex life. <laughs> do the squirrels have names? Yes, they do. <laughs> if you do know. <laughs> yes, they do. That's right. Hey, uh, the honeybee named them all, but they all have names. Yes, they all have names. Yeah. yeah how, Len how now can you has... tell them apart from one you another? You can. Oh, Paula, you can tell by... You, you, can... Can, <laughs> you can totally tell. They have personalities. Some of them have... The way they, their gates, their, the way they walk, um, they have scars. I mean, believe me, you under, yes, yes. <laughs> Len is like, Len is like, oh. Len is like, that's the cute one. And that one's the asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Len, I would advise you to stop talking. <laughs> you know what? We got video. That one's the goth and that one's the cheerleader. <laughs> you know, for, for Christmas, the honeybee got a squirrel cam. So now we have a squirrel cam set up. So she gets alerts every time the squirrel we set up a picnic table with nuts and they come oh and they eat. God. Yeah, I'm not kidding. It's I'm true. I'm getting old. <laughs> I don't care what happens. For people, for people to head to lens only squirrels account. <laughs> <laughs> He's got the squirrel That's a good idea. set up. <laughs> Paula and OG, how did you lose to this guy in trivia? <laughs> His brain is oatmeal. <laughs> I think that's a great, that's a great place to leave it. Uh, holy cow. Oh, gee, what's that? What are you doing this weekend besides going on Len Squirrel Cam? Yeah. Yeah, I've got a new pastime. Uh, not doing anything. In-laws in town, and uh, we're, we're, the, the, we're just going to hang out this weekend. Nothing. Uh, we're having an off weekend, finally, after three full weeks of travel for yeah. the OG clan. All because of that uh, Maize and Blue School. Well, Blame we're recording this before the game, so knock on wood. <laughs> See how Blame it on them. I'm actually headed to Houston this weekend. OG, we're gonna we're gonna go down there and do a museum weekend. Um, now that all of the national uh, title stuff is is done. But Len, what do you got going on at LenPenzo.com here to kick off 2024? Uh, I, you know what? I don't know. I, I think I brought up. We had 40 ways to. <laughs> improve your credit score. I think I talked about that last week. 40 ways to tickle the squirrels. On Saturday, I have a very fun financial roundup. It's it's a lot of fun. Uh, there's a lot of cool things in there. I, I post uh, probably the 12, 10 to 12 memes that I see that are very interesting. Usually they're pretty funny. Uh, and, and, and Twitter uh, uh, comments from that I find. I pick those out and uh, we just make a, make a round, a financial roundup out of those every, every, uh, every saturday so it's called black coffee stop on by and say hello and um great great yeah. weekly read yeah that's yep. it lots of fun at lenpenzo.com uh paula what's going on what are you guys doing over there to kick off 2024 all right. So uh, beginning of 2024, we aired an episode with Hal Elrod. He is the creator of The Miracle Morning, which is a six step plan to have uh, fan to have a fantastic morning routine that really sets the tone for the day ahead. Step we one, also... look out the window. Yes, step exactly. Two, say hi to the squirrel. <laughs> precisely, precisely. <laughs> Uh, we also have Jennifer Wallace coming on the show. She is going to talk about um, about how to uh, how to connect more, you know, how uh, and how to understand your own sense of importance. It's sort of a kind of go, goes back to what we were talking about earlier with needing the confidence to know that you can do things. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so she'll be on the show. We also are doing a. Um, Kind of a year in review, 2023 year in review, 2024 predictions episode. So, uh, so that's already been released. Uh, that got released Do you need the eight ball? Week. Do you need so, the eight ball? Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> My sources say no. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you're smart. <laughs> so, yes, all of that is on the Afford Anything podcast, which you can find on Spotify, on Pandora, on your favorite podcast player. 
pause right now and uh, make sure that you bookmark limpenzo.com and you uh, on wherever you're listening to us, go follow afford anything and you'll get all that goodness every week. All right, guys, thanks for a weird, hilarious and incredibly informative episode. Thanks to Jonathan Clements for uh, this wonderful piece that we had to to use for our first uh, roundtable time together this year. Now that we've got the magic eight ball out of the way, uh, Doug, man, take it from here. There's lots of takeaways, but I can't wait to hear what the top three are. Yeah, and Joe, if you actually picked on me and asked me for my favorite of these 24 thoughts. <laughs> that is so funny. Doug said, Doug said, do I get to go? I'm like, oh, yeah, you'll get to go. Yeah. <laughs> and then, as usual. <laughs> which one was your favorite, Doug? Number 19, lose the losers. <laughs> <laughs> which is what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to read this to-do list and peace the F out. <laughs> so what are some of the things on our to-do list for the new year? First, do you have 73 credit cards like OG? <laughs> Consider simplifying your debt situation. That'll make it a whole lot easier to tackle that monster and reduce it. The debt, not OG. Second, there's no way you can make all these important decisions to improve your financial picture by swiping through reels on your phone until 2 a.m. Put the phone down and get some sleep. But what's my biggest to do? Get more jumpsuits for every day wear this year. My ass looks amazing in these things. Thanks to Paula Pant for hanging out with us today. You'll find her fabulous podcast, Afford Anything, wherever you listen to finder podcasts. Thanks to Len Penzo for joining us today. You can find Len at lenpenzo.com slash trivia champ. You missed it. It's lenpenzo.com slash squirrel cam. I know. I wrote it ahead of time. Can you give me a superlative too in front of my blog, like Len's boffo blog? You know, just, you know, say it like that. So you got to really sell yeah. it. All right. Let me do the credit. Steve, we're doing the credit again. Here we go. Thanks to Len Penzo for joining us today. You can find Len at lenpenzo.com slash only squirrels. And thanks also to OG for joining us today. Looking for good financial planning help? Head to stackingbenjamins.com slash OG for his calendar. This show is the property of SB Podcasts, LLC, copyright 2024, and is created by Joe Salcihai. Our producer is Karen Repine. This show was written by Lisa Curry, who's also the host of the Long Story Long podcast, with help from me, Joe, Kate Youngkin, Karen Repine, and Doc G from the Earn and Invest podcast. Kevin Bailey helps us take a deeper dive into all the topics covered on each episode in our newsletter called The 201. You'll find the 411 on all things money at The 201. Just visit stackingbenjamins.com slash 201. Wonder how beautiful we all are? Of course you do, but you'll never know if you don't check out our YouTube version of the show, engineered by Tina Eichenberg. Then you'll see once and for all that I'm the best thing going for this podcast. Once we bottle up all this goodness, we ship it to our engineer, the amazing Steve Stewart. Steve helps the rest of our team sound nearly as good as I do right now. Want to chat with friends about the show later? Mom's friend Gertrude, Stacy Doe, and Julia Garib are our social media coordinators. And Gertrude is the room mother in our Facebook group called The Basement. So say hello when you see us posting online. To join all the basement fun with other stackers, type stackingbenjamins.com slash basement. For more interactive fun, join us on Instagram every Tuesday and Thursday for our Instagram Lives. Kate Yonkin and Joe host those weekly. Not only should you not take advice from these nerds, don't take advice from people you don't know. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Before making any financial decisions, speak with a real financial advisor. Boy, am I glad our lawyer made us say that. I'm Joe's mom's neighbor, Doug, and we'll see you next time back here at the Stacking Benjamin Show.